Well, I'm Gordon Parker, and I've been a psychiatrist for uh, uh, a long period of time. Been at the University of New South Wales for over a third of a century, and essentially been a clinician and a researcher for about 40 years. I've focused on mood disorders, uh, both as a clinician and a researcher. And I guess I've always been interested in how we model things in psychiatry. What's the best model? And what I mean by that um, in terms of mood disorders, um, how can we best identify meaningfully different mood disorders that have differing causes, but more importantly, benefit from differing treatments? And that's been my priority. So just to expand on that a little bit, we often hear about the word depression. And people talk about being taken out by depression. And people talk about, if you're depressed, go and see your doctor. What concerns me is depression really doesn't say very much in and of itself. And in the same way, um, we might use the word breathlessness. But to assume that breathlessness is a single condition would be foolish. Um, we might be breathless if we just ran in to see the doctor in the surgery or if we were climbing a high mountain. That would be normal breathlessness. We could be breathless uh, because we have asthma or pneumonia or a pulmonary embolus. So in the same way, what I've tried to do in my research work and then have it iterate with how we manage people clinically is to say, what are the key features of the biological depressive conditions and how do they differ from the depressions caused by stress or personality uh, predisposition? And how do we separate out the bipolar disorders from the other non-bipolar mood disorders? And with that information, then what are the implications for management? The, what I've been trying to counteract is firstly, simple use of the word depression as if that's all explanatory. And then the consequences of that, and in essence, if you have depression type X and you see a doctor, you'll get an antidepressant drug. Have the same type of depression and see a psychologist, you'll get a cognitive behavior therapy. Same type of depression, see a counselor, you'll get counseling. What worries me about that is it's the wrong way round the treatment a person is getting is being more dictated by the background training or discipline of the practitioner, not by anything to do with the condition itself. And that's out of whack with the rest of medicine. Because medicine would say, say for breathlessness, is it asthma or is it a pulmonary embolus? Or is it pneumonia? And would rightfully in turn give a bronchodilator or an anticoagulant or an antibiotic. So what concerns me is the consequences of just talking about depression and then having treatment decided by who you end up seeing. The consequences to my mind are both of overtreatment and undertreatment. People who would benefit from medication, having biological disorders, uh, often don't get medication. Conversely, many people who don't need medication get it as a consequence of the flawed model or paradigm. So that's been my focus for 30 years. And what we've tried to do is not only identify by research the meaningfully differing mood disorders, but then come up with a whole set of strategies, both on the website, a, for instance, a self-report measure of bipolar disorder, uh, developing what we call the MAP, the Mood Assessment Program for General Practitioners, where with all our years of sort of specialist knowledge that of course, come if you are seeing many people year after year, that we can develop, if you like, algorithms or decision rules. We'll say this person is most likely to have a bipolar disorder. This person is most likely to have a biological depression and so on. And then give recommendations to the consumers themselves, to the general public, and also to general practitioners in particular about how best to manage that mood disorder. And so that I guess the final summary statement I'd put is what we observe clinically, we then evaluate with research 
And whether we confirm or reject a finding in research, that gets fed back into clinical management. So each is sort of benefiting and building on the shoulders of the other, which we call an iterative model. And I think we've really made a very big uh, advance in helping identify the meaningfully different uh, depressive disorders and mood disorders, and then showing quite marked treatment implications.